Hi, I'm Louise Kathleen and welcome to my channel Dear Fear. Today we're going to be focusing on discussion time, which is all about discussing social cultural issues and just some interesting stuff we really want to discuss. So today we're going to be talking about mental illness, which tends to be a little bit of a tough subject, so I'm going to keep it as fresh as I can um, and dive straight into it. So essentially this really started with uh, an investigation into fear itself and into what causes fear and into what causes us to fear and what I found is how fear is actually really, one can argue, the birthplace of a lot of mental illnesses and phobias. So essentially, to quote Psychology Today, feeling fear is neither abnormal nor a sign of weakness. The capacity to be afraid is part of the normal brain function. In fact, a lack of fear can be a sign of serious brain damage. The science behind fear is that it's a brain stimulus that then um, amps up the body to be able to respond to an issue that is happening. Fear is a very necessary basic reflex that we need for survival. Realized about the human brain is that it has kind of two parts. There is the reflex and very animalistic basic part that helps you with survival, that helps you eat, breathe, poop, sleep, wake up and survive. And then there's you that's inside of you and then you decide what you do but you don't have control of the animalistic instinctual side of your brain. Yeah, a life-threatening event doesn't actually have to take place in order for you to feel fear. The thing is, is that fear is part imaginary. It's a mental creation. It can be something from standing on a cliff to giving a class presentation. There are really kind of two types of fear that you can look at, which is conditioned fear. That's fear where you have been taught or have experienced something for you to be afraid of it. For instance, it can actually be a cultural influence of something that makes you afraid of it, like a black cat. For instance, if you see a black cat, it's supposed to be bad luck. Now, that's not actually really true. It's just a black cat. You can't actually get bad luck from seeing a black cat. If anything, you should go and pet it probably having a bad day because everyone thinks it's bad luck. But what are you actually afraid of? Are you really afraid of that black cat? Or are you afraid of the fact that they said that you're gonna have some bad luck when you see the cat? What is the actual fear when it comes to conditioned fear? And the second type of fear that you can experience is anticipatory anxiety which is feeling really nervous about something that's going to happen. Like when you're going to write exams. Because you didn't study. Or you're going to get married. They snore in their sleep really badly. Kill them. Or tax evasion. <laughs> Who doesn't? Fear very much influences our decision making and our behavior. Most people know that there are two things that happen when you are in fear. There is fight or flight, which isn't actually true. There are four. There is freeze, fight or flight, and then there is fright. Freeze is very common. It happens to a lot of people. This is essentially when the, the initial feeling of shock hits you and you have that initial physical influence of fear which makes you break out into a cold sweat, your heart beats really fast, you may become lightheaded, you feel like you can't breathe, you're kind of like <gasps> heart attack, you know, it's the end of the world, but it's not, but your body's like, yes it is. So that's the overwhelming sensation of fear. And then you have your two action bases, which is fight or flight. Now, fight, very simply, as we all know, is directly confronting your fear or your obstacle, whatever is actually in front of you and you need to overcome and confront. 
Now, flight has a misconception. People take this as the one where you don't actually confront your fear, you just avoid it and you stay away from it. That's not true. Flight is the option where you figure out a way around your fear. You don't go directly to it, but you actually think of a solution around it. So, for instance, you are being fired from your job. Fight would be going straight to your boss and saying, this is why I shouldn't be fired. Flight is going, okay, I hate this job anyway, and you go and look for a new job. But the fourth one is the actual one that has no real outcome. With fright, it is when someone doesn't do either fight or flight, they just do nothing at all. The fear manifests in the subconscious of the brain, where they do nothing about the fact that they are going to be fired, they don't look for a new job. What they do do is complain and express their feelings, but don't act on their feelings. That internalizes a lot of this negative physical energy and mental energy within the body and can actually contribute to large amounts of depression, anxiety and hopelessness. Elements of fear that you go through any of these steps can actually lead to mental illness and can actually contribute to mental illness. And a lot of the time your reflex is going to think the situation is like huge and you're just going to be there like, it's not that bad, I just missed the turn off, I can get another one. And then that part of your, your brain is just like, no it's not, it's terrible, you're going to die. Ah! Fright is by far the most harmful one, is to not do anything about that feeling. The hardest thing to confront or overcome is not necessarily the fact that it has happened, but the feeling that is happening to you. The panic and fear that then very largely influences your behavior and your decision making. It is very difficult to, to go and actually address this issue if you feel like you're having a heart attack and you can't breathe and that very largely influences your confidence. So how do you just get up and go and do these things? One can't really do it alone, to be honest.